Alright, so we've got this one. Let's go and revert back to the prior image. That's this one here. And let's start an animation. Let's create a placeholder for an animation that's gonna go over, I don't know, 120 frames. And we need 270 megabytes for that. We probably do have plenty of room for that. Let's create an animation of 120 frames. Nothing changing right now, but that's what's going to be taken care of by our 3D design filter here. So let's go back to the transform and the 3D designer. And with that, it finds the, the orientation we just had uh, a little bit earlier. And perhaps we want the amplitude a little bit higher. And the angle of the rotation will go from this one to, uh, we'll just go about, we'll increase by one degree per frame. So let's go and click animate. And here it is, we have the heading, the pitch and the bank, right? HPB, heading, pitch, bank. And we'll only increase this, the heading at this time, so it's not too complex yet. And go. So now it's basically throwing that 3D design filter at this entire data set and gradually increasing the heading angle by one degree per frame. You can see progress through that. It's already done about 15 frames. You see at the top here, upper left in the menu or above the menu bar, in the window bar, you see uh, frame count, the frame count 32, 33, 34, and so on. So, um, you know, the speed at which it's doing that, of course, will depend a lot on how much RAM you have, how big the, the images are, um, how fast your processor is. To give you a frame of reference here, this one is running on an i7 Intel processor, second generation and uh, it's a mobile edition what's that a 2630 model number or i don't know if that's the megahertz or whatnot but it's an eight core system and uh we can go to control shift escape to see what the cores are doing and if they're busy number crunching uh, i believe we do use a multi-threaded system here we do have um, well at least four of the cores seem to be pretty busy and uh, that will be quite often the case in uh, Dog Waffle, in PD Pro version 6 or 7 now in particular, um, we do have many of the filters uh, multi-threaded. So if you have a multi-core system, the more cores you have, quite likely the faster this thing will render. Now not absolutely everything is uh, multi-threaded, so you may occasionally go into a particular plugin or a filter that's not quite there yet. Anyway, this was done now, and so we can go and click play animation, and you'll see the animation that we just created with our 2D paint program. And there it is. Alright, so here's an example. Now, from there we can do other things. We can perhaps throw the mirror enable, uh, mirror option on that. And uh, that's actually something we could have done right from the beginning. So uh, perhaps I'll explore that in the next part. Let's go just save this to be to make sure we don't lose this just in case. One place you want to save it is as a quick DWA, a dog waffle animation. And that would be simply a save right there. And um, let's see, where do I want to, to save this? Um, that will be in the 3D designer and this will be number one dot DWA. Right, now this is a very quick memory dump and it's a very large file, uncompressed, but it goes quick. Um, the things we can do now at that point is, well, this will basically be it for this part. The next part will explore a little bit more on combining this with uh, mirroring and with a couple of other things that we can do there as well. Oh, let's let's do just one more thing, which is to save it as an ABI as well. If we're happy with this animation, you know what? Maybe we actually need it smaller. Maybe you need some. Maybe you need to crop a portion of it. Uh, all sorts of things you might do before you decide to actually save it. Uh, for, for instance, you might want to resample it. Um, and so on. So uh, whatever you have there, at some point you, we're ready to save this. So let's go save AVI and let's say we want to make this animate very smoothly, maybe 30 frames a second rather than 24. Save this AVI and then at this point we could go to the new section, same folder here, which is the 3D designer and we'll call this one A again but this then as an AVI. One again as an AVI. And of course, in the case of an AVI file, it will want to know how we want to compress that. So uh, I'm going to use my favorite compression, uh, compression codec, which is Lagarith codec. It's lossless. 
uh, which is absolutely perfect because it's not doing approximations, you're not going to lose any pixels there. Everything is exactly the way it is and you can configure that, make sure, perhaps don't enable the null frames if you're not sure if your uh, image viewer or post editing tool uh, knows how to handle null frames. If you don't know what null frames are, you probably don't want to use them. <laughs> Um, and then also perhaps suggest RGB as a default for output. Um, there are other options. In this case we don't have any sort of alpha channel, so let's not use that. Let's just use RGB. Multi-threading, you bet. We want to go a little bit faster if we can do that. And then we can also prevent upsampling when decoding. I'm not exactly sure whether we want that or not, so let's just leave it unchecked and go. So what you see here is actually going frame by frame through the entire animation and compressing that through the Lagarif codec into an AVI file. Now this file will be significantly smaller than the original DWA file or a uncompressed AVI file would have been. We can go and show that to verify that it looks correct. And there it is playing in Windows Media Player. Perfect. Alright, that's it. Next part we'll do a little bit more with animation on this entire dataset.